extracts supplied by a sub sub librarian it will be seen that this mere painstaking burrower and grub worm of a poor devil of a sub sub appears to have gone through the long vaticans and street stalls of the earth picking up whatever random allusions to whales he could oh, anyways find in any book whatsoever sacred or profane therefore you must not in every case at least take the higgledy piggledy whale statements however authentic in these extracts for veritable gospel cytology far from it as touching the ancient authors generally as well as the poets here appearing these extracts are solely valuable or entertaining as affording a glancing bird's eye view of what is prom promiscuously said thought fancied and sung of the leviathan by many nations and generations including our own so fare thee well poor devil of a sub sub whose commenter i am thou belongs to that hopeless sallow tribe which no wine of this world will ever warm and for whom even pale sherry would be too rosy strong but with whom one sometimes loves to sit and feel poor devilish too and grow convivial upon tears and say to them bluntly with full eyes and empty glasses and not in altogether unpleasant sadness give it up sub subs for by now how much more the pains ye take to please the world by so much more shall ye forever go thankless would that i could clear out hampton court and the tulares for ye but gulp down your tears and high aloft to the royal mast with your hearts for your friends who have gone before are clearing out the seven storied heavens and making refugees of long pampered gabriel michael and raphael against your coming here ye strike but splintered hearts together there ye shall strike unsplinterable glasses extracts and god created great whales genesis leviathan making a path to shine after him one would think the deep to be hoary job now the lord has prepared a great fish to swallow up jonah jonah there go the ships there is that leviathan whom thou hast made to play therein psalms in that day the lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish leviathan the piercing servant even leviathan that crooked serpent and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea isaiah and what thing soever besides cometh with the chaos of this monster's mouth be it beast boat or stone down it goes all incontinently that foul great swallow of his and perisheth in the bottomless gulf of his paunch holland's plutarch's morals the indian sea breedeth the most and biggest fishes that there are among which the whales and whirlpools called baleene take up as much in length as four acres or arpens of land holland's plenty scarcely we had proceeded two days on the sea when about sunrise a great many whales and other monsters of the sea appeared among the former one was of the most monstrous size this came toward us open mouth raising the waves on all sides and beating the sea before him into a foam took solution the true history he visited this country also with a view of catching horse whales which had bones of very great value for their teeth of which he brought some to the king the best whales were catched in his own country of which some were 48 some 50 yards long he said that he was one of six who had killed 60 in two days other or others verbal narration taken down from his mouth by king alfred eighty eight ninety. 890 and whereas all other things whether beast or vessel that entereth into the dreadful gulf of this monster's whales mouth are immediately lost and swallowed up the sea gudgeon retires into it in great security and there sleeps montague apology for raymond seabond let us fly let us fly old nick take me if it is not leviathan described by the noble prophet moses in the life of patient job rebellious this whale's liver was two cartloads stows animals the great leviathan that maketh the seas to seethe like a boiling pan lord bacon's version of the psalms touching that monstrous bulk of the whale or orc we have received nothing certain 
They grow exceedingly fat, insomuch that an incredible quantity of oil will be extracted out of one whale. Ibid. History of Life and Death. The sovereignest thing on earth is parmaceti for an inward bruise. King Henry. Very like a whale. Hamlet. Which to secure no skill of leech's art, mote him avail but to return again to wound worker that which lowly dart denting his breast had bred his restless pain like a wounded a whale to shore flies through the main the fairy queen immense as whales the motion of whose vast bodies can fit in a peaceful calm trouble the the ocean till it boil sir william davenant preface to gondibert what spermaceti is, men might justly doubt, since the learned Hasmanus, in his work of thirty years, saith plainly, Nessio quid sit. Sir T. Brown of Spermaceti and the Spermaceti Whale, Vita his V.E. Like Spencer's talus with modern flail, he threatens ruin with his ponderous tail. Their fixed javelins in his side he wears, and on his back a grove of pike appears. Waller's Battle of the Summer Islands. By art is created that great leviathan called the Commonwealth, or State, in Latin, Civitas, which is but an artificial man. Opening sentence of Hobbes' Leviathan. Silly Mansell swallowed it without chewing, as if he had been a sprat in the mouth of a whale. Pilgrim's Progress. That sea beast's leviathan which God of all his works created hugest that swim in the stream paradise lost there leviathan hugest of living creatures in the deep stretched like a promontory sleeps or swims and seems the moving land and at his gills draws in and at his breath spouts out a sea ibid the mighty whales which swim in a sea of water have a sea of oil swimming in them fuller's profane and holy state so close behind some promontory lie the huge leviathan to attend their prey and give no chance but swallow in the fry which through their gaping jaws mistake the way dryden's annus mirabilis while the whale is floating at the stern of the ship they cut off its head and tow it with the boat as near the shore as it will come but as it be aground in twelve or thirteen feet water thomas edges ten voyages to spitzenbergen in purchase in their way they saw many whales spouting, sporting in the ocean and in wantonness fuzzing up the water through their pipes and vents which nature had placed on their shoulders sir t herbert's voyages into asia and africa harris college here they saw such huge troops of whales that they were forced to proceed with a great deal of caution for fear they should run their ship among them shout in six circumnavigation we set sail from the Elba, wind northeast in the ship called Jonas and the Whale. Some say the whale can't open its mouth, but that is a fable. They frequently climb up the mast to see whether they can see a whale, for the first discoverer has a ducat for his pains. I was told of a whale taken near Shetland that had above a barrel of herrings in its belly. One of our harpooners told me that he caught once a whale in Spitzenbergen that was white all over. A Voyage to Greenland, A.D. 1671, Harris College. Several whales have come up, come in upon this coast, Fife, Anno 1652. One eighty feet in length of the whalebone kind came in, which, as I was informed, besides a vast quantity of oil, did afford five hundred weight of baleen. The jaws of it stand for the gate in the garden of Pitt Farron, Sibold's Fife and Kinross. Myself I agreed to try whether I could master and kill this spermaceti whale, for I could never hear of any of that sort that was killed by any man, such as his fierceness and swiftness. Richard Strafford's letter from the Bermudas. Philadelphia Translation, A.D. 1668. Whales in the sea, God's voice obey. New England Primer. We saw also the abundance of large whales, there being more in those southern seas, as I may say, by a hundred to one, than we have to the northward of us. Captain's Cowley's Voyage Round the Globe, A.D. 1729. And the breath of whale is frequently attended with such insupportable smell. 
as to bring on a disorder of the brain. Ulu of South America. To fifty chosen slips of special note, we trust the important charge, the petticoat. Off we have known that sevenfold fence to fail, though stuffed with hoops and armed with ribs of whale. Rape of the lock. If we compare land animals in respect to magnitude with those that take up their abode in the deep, we shall find that they will soon appear contemptible in comparison. The whale is doubtless the largest animal in creation. Goldsmith, natural historian. If you should write a fable for the little fishes, you would make them speak of the great whales. Goldsmith to Johnson. In the afternoon, we saw what was supposed to be a rock, but it was found to be a dead whale, which some Asiatics had killed and were then towing ashore. They seemed to endeavor to conceal themselves behind the whale in order to avoid being seen by us. Cook's Voyages. The larger whales, they seldom venture to attack. They stand in so great dread of some of them that when out at sea, they are afraid to mention even their names and carry dung, limestone, juniper wood, and some other articles of the same nature in their boats, in order to terrify and prevent their too near approach. Uno von Troil's letter on Banks's and Solander's voyage to Iceland in 1772. The spermaceti whale found by the Nantuckois is an active, fierce animal and requires vast address and boldness in the fishermen. Thomas Jefferson's Whale Memorial to the French Minister in 1778. And pray, sir, what in the world is equal to it? Edmund Burke's reference in Parliament to the Nantucket whale fishery. Spain, a great whale stranded on the shores of Europe. Edmund Burke, somewhere. A tenth branch of the king's ordinary revenue, said to be grounded on the consideration of his guarding and protecting the seas from pirates and robbers, is the right to royal fish, which are the whale and the surgeon. And these, when either thrown ashore or caught near the coast, are the property of the king. Blackstone. Soon to the sport of death the crews repair, Rodman unerring his head suspends, the barbed steel in every turn attends. Falconer shipwreck. Right shown the roofs, the domes, the spires, and rockets blue self driven, to hang their momentary fire around the vault of heaven. So fire with water to compare the ocean serves on high, of spouted by a whale and air to express unwieldy joy. Cowper on the Queen's visit to London. Ten or fifteen gallons of blood are thrown out of the hearts at a stroke with immense velocity. John Hunter's account of the dissection of a whale. A small-sized one. The aorta of a whale is larger in bore than the main pipe of the waterworks at London Bridge, and the water roaring in its passage through that pipe is inferior in impetus and velocity to the blood gushing from the whale's heart. Paley's Theology. The whale is a mammariferous animal without hind feet. Baron Cuvier. In 40 degrees south, we saw spermaceti whales, but did not take any till the 1st of May, the sea being then covered with them. Colnett's voyage for the purpose of extending the spermaceti whale fishery. In the free element beneath we swam, floundered and dived in play, in chase and battle. Fishes of every color, form, and kind, which language cannot paint in mariner, had never seen from dread leviathan to insect millions peopling every wave. Gathered in shoals immense like floating islands, led by mysterious instincts through the waste and trackless regions, though on every side assaulted by voracious enemies, whales, sharks, and monsters armed in front or jaw, with swords and saws and spiral horns or hooked fangs, Montgomery's world before the flood. I owe, Payin, I owe, sing, to the finny people's king. Not this mightier whale than this in the vast Atlantic is, not fatter fish than he flounders round the polar sea. Charles Lamb's Triumph of the Whale. In the year 1690, some persons were on a high hill, observing the whales spouting and sporting with each other. When one observed, there, pointing to the sea, is green pasture where our children's grandchildren will go for bread. Obed Macy's History of Nantucket. I built a cottage for Susan and myself and made a gateway in the form of a gothic arch by setting up a whale's jawbones. Hawthorne's Twice Told Tales. 
She came to bespeak a monument for her first love who had been killed by a whale in the Pacific Ocean no less than 40 years ago. Ibid. No, sir, tis a right whale, answered Tom. I saw his spout. He threw up a pair of as, as pretty rainbows as a Christian would wish to look at. He's a raw oil butt, that fellow. Cooper's pilot. The papers were brought in and we saw the Berlin Gazette that whales had been introduced onto the stage there. Eckerman's Conversations with Gotha. My God, Mr. Chance, what is the matter, I answered. We have been stove by a whale. Narrative of the shipwreck of the whale ship Essex of Nantucket, which was attacked and finally destroyed by a large sperm whale in the Pacific Ocean. By Owen Chase of Nantucket, first mate of said vessel, New York, 1821. A mariner sat in the shrouds one night, the wind was piping free. Now bright, now dimmed was moonlight pale, and phosphor gleamed in the wake of the whale as it floundered in the sea. Elizabeth Oakes Smith The quantity of line withdrawn from the boats engaged in the capture of this one whale amounted altogether to 10,440 yards, or nearly six English miles. Sometimes the whale shakes his tremendous tail in the air, which, cracking like a whip, resounds to the distance of three or four miles. Scoresby. Mad with agony, he endures from these fresh attacks. The infuriated sperm whale rolls over and over. He rears his enormous head and with wide expanded jaws snaps at everything around him. He rushes at the boats with his head. They are propelled before him with vast swiftness and sometimes utterly destroyed. It is a matter of great astonishment that consideration of the habits of so interesting and, in a commercial point of view, so important an animal as the sperm whale should have been so entirely neglected or should have been excited so little curiosity among the numerous and many of them competent observers that the late years must have possessed the most abundant and the most convenient opportunities of witnessing their habitudes. Thomas Beale's History of the Sperm Whale, 1839. The cachalot, sperm whale, is not only better armed than the true whale, Greenlander, right whale, in possessing a formidable weapon in either extremity of its body, but also more frequently displays a disposition to employ these weapons offensively, and in a manner at once so artful, bold, and mischievous as to lead to its being regarded as the most dangerous to attack of all the known species of the whale tribe. Frederick Devil Bennett's Whaling Voyage Round the Globe, 1840. October 13th, There She Blows, was sung out from the masthead. Where away, demanded the captain. Three points off the lee bow, sir. Raise up your wheel. Steady, steady, sir. Masthead ahoy, do you see that whale now? Aye, aye, sir, shoal of sperm whales. There she blows, there she breaches. Sing out, sing out every time. Aye, aye, sir, there she blows. There, there, thar she blows, blows, blows. How far off? Two miles and a half. Thunder and lightning so near, call all hands. J. Ross Brown's Etching of Whaling Cruise, 1846. The whale ship globe, on board of which a vessel occurred the horrid transactions we are about to relate, belonged to the island of Nantucket. Narrative of the Globe by Lay and Hussey, Survivors, A.D. 1828. Being once pursued by a whale which he had wounded, he parried the assault for some time with the lance, but the furious monster at length rushed on the boat, himself and comrades being only preserved by leaping into the water, when they saw the onset was inevitable. Missionary Joinery of Tyreman and Bennett. Nantucket itself, said Webster, is very striking and peculiar portion of the national interest. There is a population of eight or nine thousand persons living here in the sea, adding largely every year to the national wealth by the boldest and most persevering industry. Report of Daniel Webster's speech on the U.S. Senate on the application for the erection of a breakwater at Nantucket, 1828. The whale fell directly over him and probably killed him in a moment. The whale and his captors are the whalesman's adventures on whale's biography, gathered on the homeward cruise of the Commodore Preble by Reverend Henry T. Cheever. If you make the last damn bit of noise, replied Samuel, I will send you to hell. Life of Samuel Comstock, the mutineer, by his brother William Comstock, another version of the whale ship globe narrative. 
the voyages of Dutch and English to the Northern Ocean in order, if possible, to discover a passage through it to India. Though they failed of their main object, laid open the haunts of the whale. McCullough's Commercial Dictionary. These things are reciprocal. The ball rebounds only to bound forward again. For now, laying open the haunts of the whale, the whalemen seem to have indirectly hit upon new clues that the same mystic Northwest Passage, from something unpublished. It is impossible to meet a whale ship on the ocean without being struck by her near appearance. The vessel under short sail with lookouts at the masthead, eagerly scanning the wide expanse around them, has a totally different air from those engaged in a regular voyage. Currents in Whaling, USXX. Pedestrians in the vicinity of London and elsewhere may recollect having seen large curved bones set upright in the earth, either to form arches over gateways or entrances to alcoves, and they may perhaps have been told that these were the ribs of whales. Tales of a whale voyager to the Arctic Ocean. It was not till the boats returned from the pursuit of these whales that the whites saw their ship in bloody possession of the savages enrolled among the crew. Newspaper account of the taking and retaking of the whale ship Hobomac. It is generally well known that out of the crews of whaling vessels, American, few ever return in ships on board of which they departed. Crews in a whale boat. Suddenly a mighty mass emerged from the water and shot up perpendicularly in the air. It was the whale. whale. Miriam Coffin or the whale fisherman. The whale is harpooned to be sure, but bethink you how you would manage a powerful unbroken colt with the mere appliance of a rope tied to the root of his tail. Chapter on the whaling in ribs and trucks. On one occasion I saw two of these monsters, whales, probably male and female, slowly swimming, one after the other, within less than a stone's throw of the shore, Tierra del Fuego, over which the beech tree extended its branches, Darwin's voyage of a naturalist. Stern all, exclaimed the mate, as upon turning his head he saw the distended jaws of a large sperm whale close to the head of the boat, threatening it with instant destruction. Stern all for your lives, warned the whale killer. So be cheery, my lads, and let your hearts never fail while the bold harpooner is striking the whale. Nantucket Song Oh, the rare old whale mid storm and gale in his ocean home will be a giant in might where might is right and king of the boundless sea. Whale Song So that's the end of the extracts, which once again is just kind of more padding, but uh, a couple of things to go with it. One of the things was... One of the things that was included was an extract from the about the voyage of the Essex. Now the Essex was a whale ship about hundred years or about eighty years or so before Melville wrote this, and it was a whale ship that was sunk by a whale, and they also mentioned a white whale, and it was a white whale that sunk the Essex. It was a rare white sperm whale that actually was known in the area where the Essex was sunk for attacking ships. And, you know, you may wonder, it's like, how can a whale sink a ship that's bigger than it is? Well, there's some things that go on about this later on, but the whale has a large, hard, fleshy mass in front of its head. Sperm whales do. And it would hit a ship. And the ship's boards would creak and flex and then eventually give way because the whale would just keep hitting it and hitting it and hitting it. Second thing, this section began talking about a sub-sub-librarian. So if you have a big library, you have a, well, if you have a library, you have a librarian who runs it, who orders books, puts them away, and all of that stuff. A large library would have a sub-librarian, somebody whose job it is to do all the stuff the librarian doesn't want to do. And then imagine the pecking order that a library gets large enough that the people who do the grunt work have people to do 
their grunt work. And so that would be the sub sub librarian or as it's called here, just sub sub and sub means below like submarine is below the ocean sub marine sub below marine is C from Latin uh, through Latin anyway so that's the thing that's the extracts and one more thing all of these different things were had citations on them and so I read the quote and gave the citation now a couple of the citations were IBID I-B-I-D and that means whatever the previous one was this came from the same place so if you're writing a bibliography on a book, you know, researching a book and writing a bibliography or writing footnotes, you can say Geoffrey Chaucer, The Pardoner's Tale, Canterbury Tales, Chapter 5, or, you know, line 30, I guess, line 30. And then you could say the next one, Ibid, line 80. So it's like, okay, same place as the one above, just because this started out back before you know you could just copy and paste things in computers and editing so it's like okay do I really want to type out you know 50 words of this information that really all you need to say is yeah same thing except page 28 or same thing except this chapter or same thing except here so that's it Ben that's the sub-sub-librarian, and that is the Essex.